Today I'm changing up my 29 gallon Neon Tetra tank. It's had houseplants growing out of it and the roots have filled up the tank which has created a beautiful background and natural environment for the fish. But now I really want a riparian plant filter system that can be easily changed out without disturbing the tank so much. This way if I want to switch out plants between tanks just to change things up or if I get a pest problem which has happened, I can easily take the plants outside, away from the tank, spray them without worrying about chemicals getting in the tank. In a previous video, I set up one of these DIY houseplant filters and showed a few different ways of operating it. Today, we're going to take it a step further and create a larger DIY houseplant filter system for this 29 gallon aquarium and we'll be adding some new fish as well. Before setting up the new houseplant filter, we need to remove the current plants. The golden pothos, golden goddess philodendron, waffle plant, and parlor palm. Now the pothos and the philodendron roots are growing all throughout the substrate. So I need to remove them without disturbing the substrate too much. So I just take one or two strands of roots at a time. Now we're back to square one and it's time to create our new houseplant filter system. A few days ago I took the hang on the back breeder box which is going to be the housing for our new houseplant filter and I siliconed one of the dividers that came with the kit into the corner to create a space for the water to pour in. We'll set this box up in a minute and I'll show you in more detail how this functions. I'm using a standard hang on the back aquarium filter to help remove debris from the water before it goes into the houseplant filter. And I want to test out another idea. I normally use clear rigid plastic to diffuse the flow of water coming out of the hob filter, but today I want to create a living water diffuser. So instead of the clear plastic, I'm using a piece of fiberglass window screen and I'm going to attach cuttings of dwarf pennywort to it by weaving fishing line through the screen and securing the cuttings to it until the roots can grow through the screen. I'm still using the filter foam that came with the AquaClear filter, but I do add polyfill to help trap more debris. After turning it on, I set the living water diffuser in place. Now it is not attached to the plastic housing, it's just staying in place. I may have to set a small stone or something on it to hold it down if it tries to float away. Well, now let's take our breeder box. Now in the first breeder box filter, I just used LECA and lava rock as the growing medium, but with this next one, I'm going to be using kitty litter. First, however, a layer of LECA and lava rock will go on the bottom of the large chamber, followed by fiberglass window screen. Then after setting the Japanese sweet flag in place, I backfill with kitty litter. After a layer of pea gravel is laid on top, in the foreground I place cuttings of ajuga and java moss. Now we're going to hang the new filter on the back of the tank with the aqua clear filter between the two breeder box filters. Now I'm going to take a piece of airline tube and create a siphon that goes from the AquaClear filter into the new breeder box filter that we've made today. And it empties into that small corner chamber that we made earlier. This way the water can easily fill up that bottom layer of lava, rock, and leka and flow upward slowly through the kitty litter media and then drip back into the tank. The first breeder box filter that was made in the previous video is connected to the underground plenum filter which is air driven. And you can see the java moss is beginning to grow on the overflow lip of the box and is actually wicking the water over the edge and into the tank. My hope is that eventually the entire lip is covered with moss on both of these boxes and that will hide most of the plastic but also create kind of a living drip wall. But I do need to keep an eye on the back of these boxes to make sure the moss isn't growing up over and wicking moisture behind the tank. So now the new houseplant filter system is in place, which gives me a flexible riparian plant setup that can easily be moved between tanks when I want to change things up or if I need to treat the plants for pests or for whatever reason. It can be easily moved around without disrupting the aquascape or the tank inhabitants. 
Now, speaking of tank inhabitants, I have some new recently adopted fish to add to this tank. A friend of mine was looking for a new home for his angelfish and cardinal tetras, and I thought this could be the perfect setup for them. So thank you, Mark, for letting me bring these fish to a new home. There are some potential downsides to this new filter system. Now I don't have the roots creating that beautiful background and growing into and feeding from the substrate. Although this does give more room in the tank, especially for these angelfish. I don't think the previous setup would have given them enough space at all. With this system, I may not be able to grow larger plants like peace lily pothos, larger philodendrons, and monsteras. The roots would just fill up the filter housing in pretty short order. So a larger housing container may be necessary for long-term growth of these mentioned plants. However, I could still grow one of these plants directly in the tank just by itself. This way I wouldn't have to completely give up the benefits of growing these plants in the tank directly and it wouldn't take up too much space that way either possibly. Now there is still more experimenting to be done with this system and I'm sure there are ways to improve it. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear your ideas.